Well, how do their chums? On my TV just here, people, I have the trailer for Baby Reindeer over on Netflix. Now, you've probably already heard about this, but it is actually based on real-life events. Now, he calls himself Donnie Dunn inside of this, but his real name is Richard Gadd. And it's about Richard Gadd's life and the things that he come across in real life, and it's a stalker. Now, there are some elements inside of this that do make you chuckle. He's a stand-up comedian. But it's got a very serious undertone. If you're thinking, oh, this is about a stand-up comedian. No, this is about stalking. And this is about stalking on a very dark and deep level. Things snowball and escalate extremely fast inside of this. I mean, it actually, actually panned out over a few years. But inside of this series, it feels like it's moving a little bit faster than perhaps it did in real life. But the characters inside of this are very likeable. And the whole way this stalking actually happened was over a cup of tea. So this lady comes into his bar where he works. She hasn't got any money. She can see that she's very broken. And he's like, would you like a cup of tea? And she's like, got no money. He's like, have it on the house. And that's how it all started. And it ends with him freaking getting glassed. His, his girlfriend getting her hair torn out. All sorts of stuff happens from this stalker attacker. Now, the way that it's portrayed is the stalker is the actual perpetrator and he is the victim. But there's a lot of victimization happening in here. There's lots of abuse here. There's physical abuse, sexual abuse. There's all sorts going on for Richard Gadd. And I do really feel sorry for Richard Gadd, but he does sort of insert himself into these situations. There's multiple times where he could have said, no, enough is enough. And he could have put an end to his own suffering, to the end of his own abuse, be that by the sexual perpetrator or by his stalker. But each time he has cut away and he has distanced himself, he goes back. It's freaking weird. I don't get it. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I saw him as quite a weak character that likes to perhaps insert himself as being the victim. Or at least that's how it came across to me. And that's the opinion I got. And with a lot of the stuff inside of, you know, current affairs and media and trying to make men feel a little bit less emasculine and emasculated and a bit more snowflakey it kind of made me think well is this more of a hit piece on men in general you know so i didn't know whether there was that sort of undertone if you just watch it and put all that sort of politics out of the freaking mindset this is actually a really good watch but with everything that's going on politically around this and how this could be a mouthpiece for a certain crowd, I would say I have to score it on what I actually felt with this. I mean, I liked it all the way up until the last few episodes. Um, so I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10 is definitely worth all the sort of praise it's getting because it does shine a light on a very dark sort of aspect. And it is interesting to see a female being a stalker of a male and the main antagonist, Donnie Dunn or Richard Gadd, he has quite a lot of different mixed relationships. And it's the relationships and how they're formed and the connections of those relationships that all sort of bring this up a level. I can understand why people are praising this to the high heavens, but I'm going to give it an eight because I found it entertaining and I watched it, but I found that the end just didn't sit well in my stomach, people. And then when you go to see that he's gone on to do interviews and things like that, and you can see now that the actual stalker has actually been released, she's actually out in the world, and it's actually causing her distress, with some of the things that are now happening to her, the tables have turned quite, yeah, she's got her own stalkers now. I just don't think two wrongs make a right, and I don't think victimization and placing yourself in the victim sort of seat, and then putting on the world for everybody to see, was a very good way of getting it out. I don't even think it should have been on screen, you know? So there's that. It was entertaining, but because it's real life and now it actually affects real life people's lives, I just don't know whether this should have been considered as entertainment in this way. But anyway, that's my thoughts and feelings. I'm giving it an eight, an 8 out of 10. But if you put all that to one side and forget that it's actual real life and you just see it as a work of fiction or something, it's probably worth like a, a 9.5 because you can't turn away from it. You want to see what happens next. We binge watched it. Just put it that way. Okay. Till next time. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. Sailing on the waves, feeling so alive with the wind in my hair. 
I can touch the sky I've been on this journey for quite some time But you, James MC You've been by my side You're like the compass that keeps me on track Always there to guide me Got my back Your comments on YouTube, they never lack You're the reason why my channel has never cracked Cats and seas Sailing through the sea But I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me James and C, you're my VIP Thank you for your support You're awesome to me